Did you know that today is World Menopause Day? This year's focus is on the very important topic of bone health. Did you realize one in two women aged over 50 are impacted with low bone quality or quantity leading to fracture? The aim of today is to try and reduce this number through education and more importantly through providing action steps to help you prevent osteoporosis in the first place. You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This is episode 102, Nine Action Steps to Improve Your Bone Health Today. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Stay tuned as your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, explains how to use natural therapies to find your ultimate health and happiness during your transition. Hi, welcome back ladies. I'm your host Jen and today we are talking all things bone health. So let's start at the beginning. Let's look at why this happens in the first place. In your body you have two main types of bone remodeling cells. Osteoblasts that build bone and osteoclasts that collapse or break down bone. We have continuous remodeling of bone over our lifetime and several external factors either favor bone building or bone loss. Let's consider puberty. At this stage of life, you experience a large influx of hormones and growth spurts occur and your bones get denser and stronger and longer. We continue to lay down additional bone until we reach around 30. From here until menopause, our bone mass is fairly consistent. Once menopause occurs, it's the reduction of estrogen that causes rapid loss of bone density, strength and height. Women lose bone at about 2% a year for the first five years after menopause. And then this slows to about 1% a year from here. Our body contains two main types of bone, cortical or flat and long bones, which are found in your arms and your legs and your ribs and your skull and your pelvic girdle. And the other type of bone is trabecular bone. And this is rounded bones. And they're found in your spinal column, your hip joint and your wrist. Unfortunately, the trabecular type of bone is more prone to osteoporosis and this is because it's fibrous, loosely packed with larger spaces between the fibers and the larger spaces can't hold as much calcium as the tightly packed cortical bones and it's the amount of calcium within the bone that determines its strength. If you don't want to be part of the statistics, the first place to start is with a DEXTA scan. This test measures your bone mineral density. Osteoporosis is a silent disease. You may not know you have it until you break a bone and it's too late. Early diagnosis can help prevent further loss and significantly reduce your risk of a life-altering fracture. Let's look at the action steps. I've had enough doom and gloom. Let's look at how we can improve your bone if the results in your test are not ideal. We're going to start with three lifestyle factors. The first one is to quit smoking. Cigarette smoking is known to reduce bone density. It increases your risk of fracture and slows healing time down if you do have a fracture. And it's regardless of whether you're a smoker or a second-hand smoker, both are linked to a reduced bone mass. 
the second lifestyle tip is exercise. And I knew you were going to say this. Exercise is vitally important. You are looking at establishing a routine that includes a variety of weight-bearing exercises, resistance work, balance, flexibility and core stability. You can consider joining a local Strong Bones class or Arthritis New South Wales has an online version. I will actually put that link in the show notes if you want to go and check that out. Alternatively, you may prefer to start working with a specialist one-on-one. Hip and spine fractures are more common in heavy alcohol consumers. It's a combination of the effects of alcohol on osteoclasts, which accelerate the breakdown of bone, and the lack of balance and coordination leading to more frequent falls. Let's move to the dietary tips. Did you hear me say it's the amount of calcium that determines bone strength? Well, calcium is a fat-soluble nutrient. Therefore, it requires a fat source in order to be absorbed and utilized. Vitamin D, another important bone nutrient, is also fat-soluble. In fact, most of the nutrients needed by bones are fat-soluble. Therefore, it's vital to get adequate good fats in daily while avoiding bad fats. Good sources of fat include seafood, coconuts, olives, fresh nuts, seeds, eggs, avocado. And bad fats include anything deep fried, man-made or processed. And some of the dangerous fats include your vegetable oils, things like cottonseed oil, corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, safflower oil and sunflower oil. Personally, I find taking a daily fish oil capsule a good insurance policy that I'm getting adequate, regular, good oils. Nutrition tip number two. It is essential to consume adequate protein and collagen. These are the structural building blocks that make up your bone matrix and add to the bone density and strength. You need to be eating a good quality protein in each meal. Collagen is found in animal bones. So by eating slow cooked meals on the bone, you get protein and collagen in one go. Alternatively, both can be purchased as powders and added to smoothies. The final dietary consideration is phytoestrogens. As bone loss increases with the reduction of estrogens, phytoestrogens have been found to be a useful way to prevent this. Outcomes from clinical trials have suggested phytoestrogens may prevent the reduction in bone mineral density loss and may help bone restructure after menopause. Let's move on to some key bone building nutrients now calcium i bet you knew i was going to say that so bones are the storage house for calcium the body needs calcium for muscle contraction so think about your heart and your muscles if you don't have enough dissolved calcium in your blood your body will take it from your bones having adequate calcium in your blood allows the body to keep your calcium locked away in your bones. And if you have too much calcium, it can be deposited elsewhere and may contribute to bone spurs, kidney stones, bursitis, arteriosclerosis. And it's because of this that I don't recommend calcium supplements on their own. Dietary calcium hasn't been shown to contribute to these deposits in the same way. So I do recommend that you increase your calcium through your diet. And the best calcium sources include seeds, especially sesame seeds, um, sardines, dark green leafy veggies and fresh nuts. If you do a supplement with calcium, please make sure it's a combination product with other helpful bone building nutrients to minimize the possibility of the deposits that we mentioned earlier. So the second nutrient is magnesium 
and anyone that's been listening to the show for a while would not be surprised because magnesium is one of my favorite menopause minerals. Anyway, research is looking at the importance of magnesium over calcium for bone health. Magnesium helps keep calcium dissolved in the blood and stops it from being deposited elsewhere, such as in the kidneys. Magnesium deficiency can contribute towards the development of kidney stones. So that's two reasons why we prefer magnesium to be combined with your calcium. So calcium on its own is is really potentially dangerous because of its ability to be deposited in soft tissue rather than in the bones. So magnesium really enhances bone building and bone modeling. So I quite often recommend magnesium calcium combinations with other bone nutrients rather than just focusing on calcium. Now the final um, supplemental consideration I have for you is fat soluble vitamins. You probably have heard vitamin D is useful in encouraging bone bone (laughs) remineralization. But did you know the rest of the fat-soluble nutrients, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, are also needed? So look out for an ADEK combination supplement rather than just straight vitamin D on its own. And you'll also find by supplementing with the entire fat-soluble family that you'll get better absorption of your vitamin D. And it can be one of those factors for women that just can't get their vitamin D levels up. Sometimes by putting the combination in, they do find that that level starts to rise for them. Well, I hope you found that useful. And I hope you take some action steps towards having stronger and healthier bones that are going to last you a lifetime. Trust me, your bones are worth it. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, I want to encourage you to head on over to my website and sign up for my email list. That way we can keep in contact and you can get more great tips and hints for your menopausal transition. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you're all well. Enjoy World Menopause Day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend.